Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Cummins India Limited Q2 FY23-24 Earnings Conference Call. We hope you all are keeping safe and healthy. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I will now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashwat Ram, Managing Director, Cummins India Limited. Thank you. And over to you, Mr. Ram. Thank you. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Cummins India Limited Q2 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. I am Ashwat Ram, Managing Director of Cummins India Limited. Joining me on the call today is Mr. Ajay Patel, Chief Financial Officer of Cummins India Limited. Thank you all for joining us on this call today. The quarterly results this time demonstrate a stable outlook in the domestic market and a resilient Indian economy. While the key economies and regions of the world are experiencing slowdown in economic growth rates. I would first like to share an update on our Q2 FY24 financial results. For the quarter ended September 30th, 2023, with respect to the same quarter last year, sales at rupees 1,871 crore are lower by 3% compared to rupees 1,922 crore recorded in the same quarter last year. Domestic sales at rupees 1,364 crore are lower by 2%. Exports at rupees 507 crore are lower by 4%. Profit before tax at rupees 426 crore is higher by 27% compared to the same quarter last year. For the quarter ended 30th September 2023 with respect to the last quarter, our sales at rupees 1,871 crore are lower by 14% compared to rupees 2,175 crore recorded in the last quarter. Domestic sales at rupees 1,364 crore are lower by 19%. Export at rupees 507 crore is higher by 2%. Profit before tax at rupees 426 crore is higher by 3% compared to the previous quarter. I would now like to share the segment-wise sales breakup for the quarter ended September 30th, 2023. Domestic sales, power generation domestic sales were rupees 486 crore, 28% lower compared to last year and 44% lower compared to last quarter. Distribution business sales were rupees 549 crores, 23% higher compared to last year and 3% higher compared to last quarter. Industrial domestic business sales were 300 crores, 20% higher compared to last year and 27% higher compared to last quarter. Exports, high horsepower exports were rupees 264 crores, 13% higher compared to last year and 8% higher compared to last quarter. Low horsepower exports were 209 crores, 14% lower compared to last year and 4% higher compared to last quarter. I am now providing Cummins India financial guidance. The Indian economy remains resilient to geopolitical events. Softening demand in developing economies and the inflationary trends seen both in India and worldwide. GST collections continue to remain strong, indicating underlying trade activities. The index of industrial production, IIP, 
EMI, etc., are all indicating a reasonably stable economic outlook. Keeping the Indian economy on course for growth in the range of 6.3 to 6.8 percent based on various estimates. Geopolitical events, especially further escalation of conflict in the Middle East, fluctuation in crude oil prices, rising US bond yields, and their impact on capital flow are a few key watchouts. The company successfully launched the CPCB4 emission norm compliant products in the market on time. The prior two quarters witnessed some demand shifts as both CPCB2 and CPCB4 plus products are allowed to be sold till June 2024. We expect the demand to normalize and sustain for the rest of the year. With most of the developed markets experiencing slowdown in demand, we are closely monitoring our end market conditions. The company continues to have prudent capital allocation and cost management and has a strong balance sheet and cash position. We remain optimistic about the company's prospects for continued profitable growth. We remain optimistic about the prospects of the company's continued profitable growth and expect double digit revenue growth for fiscal year 2023-24. I now open the session for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Evendus Park. Please go ahead. Now, hi sir, uh, thanks for taking my question. My first question is with respect to the power joint business. Uh, during the quarter, it's obvious that we have seen a uh, uh, revenue decline because the three by activity which was there in the first quarter uh, is getting normalized. Uh, my question is more to the, towards the secondary demand. I mean, uh, from the GOEM to the end customer level, how it is, uh, especially in the HHP level, that is above 750 or 800 kVA. It shouldn't have been impacted by this pre uh, uh, buy activity, right? So, how that demand is, which sectors are driving growth? If you can share your thought process, or repeat. Yeah, so uh, demand continues to remain robust, especially in the domestic market. And we have seen uh, quite a bit of depletion uh, in the inventories that were built up uh, as part of the pre buy. And uh, we, have, uh, we have seen the demand. Uh, uh, continue to remain strong, so uh, we are quite hopeful that the, the remaining quarters uh, we will see a, a bounce back as far as uh, the numbers are concerned from a domestic market perspective. Uh, if you can give it in terms of numbers, like volume growth in the LHP business, how it was year on year for this quarter, HHP, how it has been, uh, if you can share that perspective, it will be great. Sure. Uh, so for us, uh, we have seen that, uh, just one second here, I'm just pulling up the numbers here. Right. So uh, we saw demand in LHP of uh, drop by nearly 60% uh, versus the last uh, year, and we saw MHP demand drop by nearly 70% uh, as compared to the previous year, whereas HHP demand, we saw only drop by 2% because we count HHP at uh, 500 kVA and above. So you can see that the real, that there is hardly any drop uh, in uh, HHP. So, your hypothesis that that should not impact HSP is actually correct. 
and uh, some parts of HSP continue for us to remain under allocation because uh, we continue to build long term capacity which takes 18 to 24 months to build out. Uh, whereas the uh, LSP and MSP markets have corrected uh, from an inventory perspective and we expect that to uh, uh, come back to a steady state level of what we saw in uh, uh, in the uh, in the first quarter we expect that to uh, come back to those kinds of levels got it sir and uh, my second question is with respect to the industrial business uh, we have seen very good growth of around 20 percent uh, where has this growth come from uh, is it from the construction equipment side compressor side right <coughs> Yeah, uh, quite quite good bounce back uh, on construction as compared to the last year, primarily driven by the fact that uh, road construction has begun again uh, and we expect that trend to continue because of from the stated ambition of building 12,000 plus kilometers of road this year, only 4,000 has been completed so far. So there is a lot of work yet to be done. So that market uh, historically uh, has underperformed and that is now starting to bounce back uh, pretty robustly. Uh, also, uh, some of our other businesses in the industrial are a little bit lumpy. So, you know, you see some spikes happen and then you see steadiness in some quarters or you see a dip in some quarters just because they get delivered. And so we, have, we saw some very good delivery of uh, rail uh, in uh, this quarter driven by power car and DETC. We also saw, are starting to see the compressor uh, business uh, starts to uh, bounce back. Uh, sometimes we have seen this trend historically that when monsoons are not that great, people have to drill more for water well and other applications and, and the compressor market then uh, begins, to, begins to bounce back. And we also see other markets, uh, especially areas like defense, uh, start to uh, come back and uh, again, those are lumpy in terms of delivery. So when we have good delivery uh, like we did in the previous quarter, uh, we are able to uh, grow that business. Uh, but overall, the, the, as long as the core infrastructure continues to uh, keep getting, build, getting built out, so mining, for example, is, is much lower in this quarter uh, as compared to the previous year, same quarter. Uh, but there are many, many, many tenders out there because uh, Mining for steel as well as coal is actually beginning to scale up quite significantly. So we are quite optimistic that the demand will continue to improve in, in that segment as well. Got it, sir. And my final question is with respect to the gross profit. Gross margins have expanded very significantly. Is it because of the mix being in favor of the higher end jets being sold and coupled with raw mat going down? So is that the case? So, uh, like in some quarters, you get a perfect storm of bad news. This time, we have a perfect storm of good news. Uh, in that, uh, we were able to control the material cost, all the uh, advantages we had of continuing commodity corrections uh, benefited us. Uh, we continue to hold on to pricing, and uh, we also got favorable mix because uh, lower margin products uh, in low horsepower, etc. Uh, were uh, the demand was significantly lower. So all three variables uh, which impact uh, our uh, material margin were favorable uh, and that's why the material margin improved significantly. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Ashwat. Uh, congratulations on a great quarter, sir. Uh, Thank my you. First question. Yeah, so my first question is on uh, so what was the mix of the CPC four plus uh, in this quarter? Because I think last quarter. I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Kanpal. Your voice is muffled. I would request you to kindly use your handset, please. I'm yeah, using my handset. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Please continue. Yeah, so in the mix, what was the contribution of the CPCT four plus engine? Because last time I think we had said that we will be targeting about 24 percent for the full year. So. Any positive surprise you are seeing? Uh, I was seeing on your social media handles you've been promoting with your dealers all these CPCD4 plus compliant engines. So how's been the feedback from the channel, from the end customers? So any earlier trends of picking up of demand despite the prices being higher and still some time before it gets implemented? 
Right. So uh, actually, it's pretty positive news, uh, especially uh, in the areas like the NCR region and the big cities. Uh, people are switching over to CPCB Core Plus despite the pricing uh, advantages at, of CPCB 2. Uh, just because the product is uh, newer, it has better, longer life, better performance, uh, etc. Uh, there are some nodes where we are actually now uh, uh, scaling up capacity to be able to uh, uh, supply CBCB4 plus uh, products. But that is only true in the, in the big cities. In, the, in all the other regions, uh, CBCB sale continues to be uh, strong and uh, uh, I, I can't give you exact numbers, but I would say that uh, greater than 70% of the sales uh, for the quarter were with CPCB2 uh, products. But the very fact that CPCB4 plus, uh, I was expecting 5 to 10%, but the actual demand is a lot higher than what I was uh, anticipating. Could have that also impacted our gross margins? I mean, slight better mix uh, in the CPCB4 plus because I think they would little bit, a little bit, but not yet significant enough because the ratios are so skewed in favor of uh, CPCB2 plus. It's more to do with us not selling uh, uh, as many low horsepower sets as compared to just selling more CPCB4. Uh, were there any one offs in this quarter in the margins and gross margin? I mean, despite the fact that take the degrowth in the low horsepower engines, still the margins look better. I mean, the benefit, I mean, we've been holding on to uh, the volumes, uh, not much of a degrowth fee. Uh, so, uh, were there any other one offs, uh, or is largely just as you said, commodity benefits and just the pricing being holding on? Uh, no, actually, this is just the, uh, you know, the, you, it, sometimes you get the positive effect of all the work you've been doing for a long time. So, no one-offs, but uh, yeah, uh, we are pretty happy that, uh, we are happy with good news sometimes, so. Okay. And just the last question on the exports market, sir. I mean, uh, how is your strategy on the CPC before plus? I mean, I've been doing, been doing promotions for in India, the unit, the chat work. So how has been the response, uh, has been the promotions of marketing being done for the CPC before plus compliant engines in the export markets? Right. So till the last qu quarter, we were focused on launching the CPC before products in the domestic market. So all the fine tuning, testing, validation, approval, uh, you know, uh, branding, all of the work was 100% focused on the domestic markets. Once the launches were complete and once we got the news that uh, uh, in India we have decided to push out the uh, implementation for another year, we are now focusing all our energies on trying to figure out how to sell these same products into other markets. The first markets where these products can be used well are in the European Union. And so now efforts are on to take the product and uh, get the required approvals in the EU, get them customized for those markets and those uh, applications. And uh, there is a, a global plan which has been put in place uh, stage by stage on uh, how the product will be transitioned first to EU and then to markets in America where uh, the voltages as well as the frequencies at which those gensets uh, operate are completely different. And so we are going to have to do some modifications uh, on the product to be able to meet those specifications. We expect to uh, get all of this uh, uh, engineering work done in the next couple of quarters. And uh, so uh, to answer your question, uh, work is going on and we are pretty focused on trying to, uh, uh, to push these products uh, on a global scale because we feel uh, these are world class products and uh, we have a very good uh, price positioning uh, to be successful uh, globally. Okay, so thank you, Nishal. That was my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur from HDFC Live. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Good morning, sir. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, just touching back on the, uh, the domestic power gen uh, segment. So if you could just uh, highlight again, you know, how's the inventory in the channel with your GOEM, I'm sorry, uh, especially post the pre-buy and now of course you've seen some normalization in Q2. So uh, do we, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but do we expect uh, Q3, Q4 to be more normalized quarters? 
uh, now that uh, uh, you know uh, most of this pre buy and, and the normalization being over so what kind of growth do you think for the full year uh, is possible yeah so we think inventories are, are uh, pretty much back to the normal inventory levels the channel had before the pre buy and uh, which is why we think that uh, q3 and q4 will be uh, from a demand perspective what i consider regular quarters which means uh, uh, we continue to uh, attempt to deliver the domestic market at 2x of the gdp in terms of growth so uh, that's that's where we think we will uh, we will be able to get to by the end of this year Fair. And uh, on a related note, uh, you know, you were talking of some supply chain or potential supply chain issues because you're making both the two and the four uh, engines. So is that largely sorted? Some parts of it are sorted, but you know, uh, some parts of supply chain uh, uh, are not fully sorted because they take a couple of years to put the uh, incremental capacity in place. and uh, we are already making all the investments for that we started making the investments nearly uh, two years ago but it takes time for setting up some of these large engine capacities and uh, so we are meeting demand uh, but we are not able to uh, you know have excess uh, supply available to meet unconstrained demand so it is still constrained demand so we expect by uh, i would think by uh, early part middle of next year to be in much better position as far as uh, supply is concerned the other part of supply is the global electronic supply chain is still in crisis so despite uh, despite this being a reason i have been stating for almost 3 years now uh, the uh, the it is still in allocation so we we are not getting 100% uh, of all the electronics that we need uh, to meet all the demand in the market so it still Uh, we are keeping strategic inventory we are doing all the necessary things we are negotiating we are setting up more suppliers we are doing all the things but if there is a spike in demand in certain other markets around the world sometimes we are not getting all the parts that we need so it is still constrained so uh, it's not yet a situation where i can say that every piece of demand will be met uh, it's still uh, wait and watch on some notes sure and uh, on the uh, export piece you know uh, while uh, it's obviously grown q on q we still seeing a slight decline uh, on a yoy but surprisingly the shp growing and the lhp declining uh, so if you could just help us uh, and i understand q3 typically is a weakest quarter uh, as we head into the calendar end uh, but how how do you see the export piece kind of playing out next couple of quarters uh, will 23 end be the bottom and maybe start seeing better numbers going into 24 how should we look at it yeah so uh, this quarter uh, hsp was robust because we were still fixing and uh, delivering on backlogs uh, and we are seeing pretty much all markets around the world start to slow down a bit there are some pockets in africa which continue to do okay there may be there are some pockets Uh, in uh, latin america which are uh, which are okay but when you look at the overall trend whether it be europe whether it be china whether it be big chunks of the middle east uh, uh, we are starting to see uh, demand uh, drop pretty uh, significantly uh, it's, uh, it's uh, we are trying to counter that by trying to launch more products and do those kinds of things but when typically some of these markets go down they go down uh, and uh, you've been able to hold out for this quarter but, but i am uh, the from the way i see the order board show up uh, i think uh, it will it will continue to weaken for the next quarter and uh, maybe start to pick up uh, in the fourth quarter got it and just the last one is on the defense side and there was some news flow about comments being selected Uh, to supply the engines for the uh, for the light tank project, uh, the project Zoravar. So, uh, if you could just help us, uh, uh, you know, uh, what is the kind of supplies we want to do here? Is it from Cummins India, the listed entity? Uh, you know, timelines for delivery, etc. Uh, yeah. So these are uh, long gestation uh, projects, and here uh, on this project that you are mentioning, uh, our partner is uh, Larson and Two Bro. Uh, we similarly work with many of the OEMs in India to supply uh, uh, 
uh, them uh, engine products and uh, this order has been uh, one of the many years of work and uh, uh, it's right now in uh, you know it's right now in the trial stage etc and as the as the draw outs come from uh, from the customers uh, they will be supplied this product is made uh, in uh, north america and some value add is done in india and then uh, supplied to uh, this customer it's a very specific and special uh, purpose designed defense product so it's not a it's not a mainstream product which has just been adapted it's a very special product just designed for defense which has been used by Cummins in uh, markets in North America and other places. Okay, sounds great. Very helpful. Yeah, just to yeah. provide clarity, that is just for this order. There are many other defense projects which we are yeah. working on which have uh, all localized product as well. Mm -hmm. I was referring to the very specific order that you mentioned uh, earlier. Sure. Got that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jonas Butta from Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, so two questions. Firstly, uh, given that it's been more than a quarter now that we are selling both CPCB4 and two engines, what are the sort of early indications that we are seeing in terms of the absorbable price increase? Because you know. You, I remember that you told us uh, prior to the launch that anywhere close to 20% upwards would would be the pricing impact. But in reality, you know, uh, you know what is uh, that on the ground in terms of the uh, price uh, rise that we've been able to pass through without impacting demand? Uh, it, uh, what the price uh, indications that we have given those are the exact price indications that we have. Uh, launched the product within the market uh, and this is the first quarter where we have uh, started to see demand and uh, uh, we are in the, in the areas where uh, the demand is the highest which is the NCR region and in the big cities uh, we are not seeing that as impacting demand as a matter of fact we are, we are getting greater demand uh, despite, the, despite the pricing because the product is, is that much uh, better. Uh, so we don't see uh, once the overall transition happens by middle of next year that this incremental price is something the uh, the market will struggle with. This kind of transition has happened in multiple markets around the world and in multiple products where there is uh, there is a psychological resistance to start off with but when, when it is the same for every manufacturer and the, the industry has changed then uh, everyone just you know aligns to that and uh, moves ahead. And the uh, company has also been looking at uh, uh, alternate means to be able to uh, uh, to work with uh, with banks and other financing agencies to uh, help people uh, uh, finance uh, these products, etc. So the net impact on individuals is not as significant as one might think. Got it. So uh, in a, in a full year, so say starting June 24, uh, you know, uh, if volumes remain as is where is in terms of the demand it's next year potentially then our power gen sales by the virtue of just the sales mix should be up at least 15 percent or just because that's going to be the pricing impact is that a fair assessment uh it's a fair assessment but that that doesn't really hold true for all products there are some products where the just because of volume and the change in platform, there's a higher higher content of imports, and uh, uh, even if prices go up, but uh, margins don't necessarily go, uh, go up in the same proportion. As a portfolio, we will continue to do uh, better than uh, what we have done, uh, but that does not mean that this this translates into like today we are making 20%, next year we'll make 40%. No, the math doesn't work out that way. Uh, it, it, you continue to keep it and our ambition is to continue to grow our overall uh, margins by 100 basis point year on year. Uh, so uh, which was which was what my follow-up question was sir now so since we now we have an indication of the pricing being absorbed also could you help us understand the gross margin differential between 
the 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 CBCB two and four plus now, you know, given that the supply chains are in a way stabilized. So, you know, where are we settling now, and then what is so the it's, it's very difficult to give you this at this stage because first of all, we are we are just coming out of a quarter where utilization is incredibly low. We are burning off inventory from an old, older cycle. We have just started to ramp up a new cycle. So it's very, very difficult to give you an answer to say uh, what a stable situation will, will look like. All I can tell you is that uh, if once we reach steady state and the percentage of CPCB4 becomes greater than that of CPCB2, uh, margins will maintain this positive trend line of improvement. Got it. So my second question was on, uh, you know, the VRS that scheme that we've launched. Uh, if you can walk us through the rationale, because you know, if the going is so good and and, and you know capacities are coming up, uh, you know, what what is triggering uh, the VRS? Sure. So uh, first of all, you have to keep looking at uh, people cost in India. People cost in India is rising at the rate of roughly anywhere between. Uh, 10 to 15 percent on a year-on-year -year basis, and so uh, it's almost keeping the pace to uh, the rate at which growth in sales is happening. And we continue to look at opportunities to improve cost efficiency, whether it be material cost efficiency or people cost efficiency. Also, given the softening demand and uncertain economic uh, uh, outlook in some of the global markets. We need all of our employees to help reduce costs, lower inventory, and just manage our efficiency as we continue to meet our goals for profitability and cash flow. So this is an ongoing exercise of, of cost management, of, of pruning, of cutting, of, of trying to get more and more efficient as we uh, move along. This is not something which is uh, new that the company has done. There's a lot of focus on cost management uh, throughout the year and over the last uh, couple of years, uh, but we continue to face, uh, uh, you know, growing costs. So we are just looking at uh, ways to keep managing that and getting more efficient. Sure. And my last question, if I can just squeeze in, so the export sales that uh, and and your commentary suggests that you know developed markets seem to be softening in terms of demand. Uh, could you please? Remind us in in the first half or in FI23, developed markets accounted for what percent of exports? And again, is it fair to say that these are markets where our margins are relatively better than that in emerging market? Because there we have in emerging markets we run our own distribution channel, while 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 in the developed markets largely to the parent entities. If you can give us that, that will be helpful. And that's my final question. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it's pretty complicated because it depends on what products and the whole bunch of things. But all I can tell you is that the developed markets of uh, Europe and North America have dropped uh, like over 50 percent. So as compared to Asia Pacific, uh, Middle East, Latin America, which are dropping more like uh, you know 5 to 10 percent. Uh, so the, the, the proportionate drop is significant uh, in the uh, in the in the developed market, uh, but it's difficult to say uh, how that uh, impacts uh, margins because you know the, the the products and the mixes are completely different for each of those and they keep changing. Sure, uh, appreciate it and all the very best. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renu Beth from IISL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for very strong results. Uh, my first question, yeah, uh, my first question is uh, uh, coming back on the export side. Uh, while you did mention of glaring decline in US and EU, uh, is part of the decline also attributable to significant inventory destocking, which these markets are witnessing um, after the pandemic now? Given average inventory in these markets of various products have had uh, shot up very sharply. And customers are pruning uh, inventories to keep the cash profits better. Uh, uh, so, can you throw some more color on this? Yeah, certainly uh, that is a fact. As a matter of fact, uh, when uh, Cummins Incorporated announced their results, they uh, they did mention that 
significant amount of inventory correction has happened and will continue to uh, to happen. So that that, that is a, a factor in it, a, a big factor, and especially for the next quarter, it will be a big factor because as companies come to the year end, they try to optimize inventory as much as uh, possible. But that doesn't take away from the fact that because of all these Middle East crises, oil prices going up, uh, Ukraine, Russia still not getting resolved, the entire China market uh, uh, still recovering slowly, there is slower demand in uh, from all, uh, pretty much all over the world. Uh, so that has also got a part to play. We continue to, uh, you know, push uh, aggressively to try to uh, compensate loss in demand from the overall market by attempting to gain share, etc. Uh, but the reality is that uh, there is softness in the base demand itself. Sure. Uh, and when we uh, talk about attempts to gain share and presence in export portfolio, uh, typically these would be for which type of applications, which type of uh, genesis so, that we're talking so about? These are what we uh, earlier have uh, you know, said that we, were, we had done our fit for market 1, fit for market 2. Now we are in the process of launching fit for market 3. And what we are trying to do is to try to develop products which are very, very suitable to specific regions. Earlier we used to have one product which was the same product for Europe, for Africa, for Middle East, for America, everywhere the product was the same. Then with Fit for Market 2 we did some percentage of delineation uh, of products based on the lo geographic location. Now Fit for Market 3 does that even more and it also tries to take some of the products developed for CPCB 4 plus and applicate them into uh, other markets. So, the combination of all of these efforts, effort, more local understanding and then developing products to meet those markets is what will what we are uh, working on to improve market share even in a declining market situation. Got it. Um, secondly, on the margins, while you did highlight that Tokyo was the perfect quarter in terms of mix and various other elements. Uh, as we move in the second half of the year, commodities remaining benign and volume growth coming back uh, on the domestic power gen business. Um, can we assume A, gross margins to sustain that 32-33% uh, level? And from a longer term perspective, uh, you tend to highlight that company would target 35% kind of gross margin from a longer term perspective. Uh, so how should we read into uh, the margin trends expected for second half of the year and from a medium term perspective, how long uh, it may be for us to reach 35% kind of gross margins? Yeah, you are referring to material margin at uh, 35%. Yeah, margins, yeah. Uh, gross margins are a lot lower, but material margin, like I said, it's, uh, it's a of everything going well. Uh, we expect certain parts of, of it uh, to uh, to act negatively compared to 35 percent, which is almost like an all-time uh, you know best kind of number, uh, and uh, we expect with the mix changing uh, in subsequent quarters with larger uh, low horsepower being sold, more of the data center PDI ma markets being served, etc., that uh, at least a couple of percentage points will drop from the material margin uh, with that. But our endeavor is to uh, not give up the, all the gains uh, and somewhere go between 32 to 34 percent is, is, is the number we, we are continuously striving to hit. Uh, and uh, when it go, goes below that, it makes us uh, grumpy. When it goes above that, uh, we are slightly pleased. But 32 to 34 is the range we are, uh, we are trying to, uh, as a sweet spot of where we would like to uh, remain consistently. Got it. And uh, lastly, um, any updates that you would like to share in terms of new product introductions or launches or, uh, across different applications in the industrial business? Yeah, quite a few. They, they, they just keep happening. Uh, I think uh, the gentleman earlier spoke about some of the defense uh, defense launches. Uh, we've, we've finished introdu introducing all the power gen uh, domestic market. We've introduced uh, RECD uh, kits. Uh, we are uh, selling more products into the rail market. Uh, uh, we are also uh, launched some uh, special propulsion engines uh, into the marine market. Uh, we have uh, launched some uh, new gensets into the also into the marine market in the mining market. Uh, 
Uh, we are uh, trying to win some orders for uh, QSK 23 based uh, uh, engines uh, into into that market. Uh, what else have we launched? Uh, Anything on the Vande Bharat and the electric uh, locos and the trains that we are looking at? Uh, those are in final field approval. So those are uh, uh, those are what we call hotel load converters, and those are in final phases of approval. So we haven't yet finished that work. That is all incremental. So that is in type testing right now. Uh, so once those get approved, we will be talking about different types of numbers as compared to what we are uh, seeing now. We've also been able to uh, launch. Uh, uh, some of our uh, L series uh, engines uh, for the defense market uh, with uh, with customers like uh, Bharat Forge. So yeah, lots of things uh, being launched uh, in parallel. So that's going to be an ongoing effort, and uh, every quarter we will attempt to uh, uh, launch more product. Thanks much. And lastly, um, any updates that you can share on the likely uh, capex for fiscal 24 and for 25 for coming India? It's, it's uh, pretty much in line as what we have indicated, no special uh, uh, capex other than uh, uh, for launching products or for uh, upgrades to products, etc. So it's, it's likely to be in line with uh, uh, with what we were doing this year, maybe 5-10% more because sustenance uh, increases as, as the asset base increases. Thanks. Thanks much and the best wishes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavan Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Ashwat. Uh, uh, congratulations for good numbers. Thank you. Um, so, Ashwat, the question is, uh, when we actually anecdotally see the construction equipment market, we, uh, we see a significant increase in market share for the Chinese uh, players. Uh, and we have a large market share in the construction equipment segments. If you could g just give us an outlook on how are we seeing this market? Are we also able to maintain our share with supplies to these Chinese equipment suppliers? Yeah, certainly the Chinese are very strong, not only in India, but around the world. And uh, Cummins uh, having a presence in pretty much all markets around the world also has relationships in terms of supplier, customer with uh, many of these uh, companies. And so when they bring their product to India and then they have to meet uh, local value add and content requirements, they certainly approach us and uh, we, uh, they look at us as prime partners to supply them the power drain. And uh, we are working with pretty much all of those OEMs but we also continue to work with our traditional OEMs uh, from America, from Japan, from Europe uh, uh, to, to supply them products. This, uh, this is a sweet spot for Cummins uh, around the world and uh, we intend to continue to uh, uh, improve our uh, position in this space. Sure. Uh, and uh, on the competitive landscape in this segment, because Waichai has also set shop here, and similarly on the power gen side, if you could just talk about the competitive landscape, because certain other capital good companies have been complaining about uh, a sudden surge in the Chinese imports and which is hurting them. So certainly, they are, those companies are pretty aggressive, and uh, uh, they uh, are state-run companies, and they are able to deploy scale like. Uh, uh, like uh, we cannot, uh, so certainly we are under competitive threat uh, and certainly uh, we do pitch to the government uh, uh, in cases where we find unfair prices or dumping of, uh, of goods at unreasonable prices, we do uh, uh, write to the respective government agencies to, that we are happy to compete on a fair basis but uh, when the you know when pricing is unfair, uh, it becomes a challenge, and uh, and customers are not so discerning uh, in the end markets. Uh, for them, price is everything. So uh, yeah, we do lose uh, some kinds of uh, orders, but when it is compared spec to spec on product technology, etc., we have an advantage. Uh, when it compares, we also have huge amounts of localization, so we are able to stand 
two to two and fight with them even on prices. Uh, but when it is unfair pricing in certain cases, we have seen that, uh, then it becomes a challenge. But it's not a significant challenge as of today, uh, but it can be in the future. So on the exports, uh, so historically we had a larger share uh, in the uh, African and some of the uh, developing markets. Uh, if you could just help us the, the geographical share and the ongoing uh, uh, currency uh, volatility in some part of the Middle East and Eastern Europe, uh, how is it uh, impacting our outlook there? So uh, Asia PAC, uh, I can give you the breakup of how the 507 crores of exports was region wise. So Asia PAC was uh, 122 crores, Latin America was 137 crores, Middle East was 111 crores, Europe was 64 crores, Africa was 63 crores and, and the US was 8 crores. So we have seen the biggest drop as I mentioned. 50 plus percent kind of drops in Europe and uh, North America, uh, whereas we have seen smaller drops in Asia and the Middle East as of now, but we expect that to worsen in the next quarter. Sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for taking my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, morning, Ashwat, and congratulations on great operating performance. So uh, my first question is, um, so in H1, we've done around 30 billion uh, for the domestic sales, up around 19%. How much of that is um, CPCB4 revenues? Uh, I'm sure if I missed that. Uh, and is that broadly 80, 90% market share in H1 uh, for you at this stage? Uh, in H1, I would say CPCB uh, uh, sales are less than 20% of our power gen sales. Okay. Um, um, and uh, sir, in your assessment, so maybe today we are the only supplier of the new node uh, within the permissible range. Um, do you think maybe six months to 12 months is a time where you will have competition joining in terms of uh, entering the market or it will take much more longer? You know, you know, I appreciate we can't take names, but qualitatively you can help us understand. Yeah, I think all competition have announced that they uh, have product uh, ready because the it was, launch was supposed to happen in, in July. So they may not have been 100% ready, but I think everyone has uh, announced that they have uh, some product ready. Uh, so it's, it's absolutely uh, uh, going to be the scenario that uh, uh, when it launches 100% that everyone uh, will be ready. But it also means that we've had one year to further fine-tune these products and make them even better and even more efficient. So this is an ongoing uh, uh, cycle, and uh, we we uh, we you know we 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 play this competition uh, throughout the world, and uh, uh, which is why Cummins continues to invest very very heavily in in product uh, technology uh, so that we can remain uh, uh, ahead of competition. So then my final question is on FY25, um, you know, on a normalized basis, what, what would be the volume growth for the industry uh, for the power gen? Thank you. We think that the power gen market, at least for the next few years, will grow at a CAGR of at least 7 to 8% in the domestic market. And it has been our stated ambition that uh, Cummins India Limited grows at at least 2x of the GDP. So we expect for the next year the GDP to grow at at least six and a half percent. So which means uh, you got the automatic answer that uh, we will aim to grow at at least thirteen percent uh, to meet our own internal aspirations. Uh, that's very helpful, uh, uh, Ashwat. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Gajare from Haitong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good morning, uh, gentlemen, and thanks for the opportunity. You know, I wanted to continue from an uh, earlier participant question where you talked about, you know, ultimately moving toward a sustainable uh, material margin of about 34 to 35% uh, over a period of 18 to 20 months. I think you talked about this uh, almost a year back. Uh, 
Now, today you are talking about, you know, material margin moving bit or remaining between 32 to 34 percent. So is this a, a clamp down on your earlier thought process of the company being able to move towards 34-35 uh, percent margin? No, I think it's not a plan of what, uh, I guess what I meant to say is we have already achieved 35, so, you know, so, but that is because we had all good variables uh, work in our favor. That's not going to be the case in, in every quarter. So what we are attempting to do is, if you look at the previous year's uh, uh, material margins, they were closer to 30.8%. So from that framework, to move the entire average up by 5% could be a multi-year journey. But the 32 to 34% range that I indicated, it seems that it can be sustainable uh, at least uh, for the for, for the next uh, next couple of years as we build up the next series of, uh, of cost structure and uh, material structure, products, etc., which then eventually get us to that 35% kind of level. That, it would make us extremely happy to be able to get there. Uh, I'm just uh, stating that uh, you know there are. Uh, it's easy to put out a number. It's uh, quite complicated uh, to work systematically to be able to get there. So the bridge between 30 to 35 indicates that we need to sustain 32 to 34 at least for a period of time before we can build on it and then get to 35 on a consistent basis. So that's that's where we are. Uh, we think we are going. Okay, uh, fair enough. So my second question is, you know, you know, we do understand from our channel check that the inquiry level have seen material in rise, you know, in the recent months. But I think your commentary seems to be, or it appears to be guarded in terms of domestic growth of, you know, mid-teens, uh, especially when Q3, Q4 are normally stronger for the company. Can you talk us? Uh, can you talk about this? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh certainly a uh, little bit of uh, of the uh, the domestic growth uh, we do think it will be in the mid teens because if the market itself grows at 7 to 8% we are growing even faster uh, than the market so we do think that uh, you know that itself takes uh, a lot of work uh, also there is a whole bunch of uh, uh, as i said inventory is, is is burning out but it doesn't burn out evenly across all the nodes so there are certain nodes where uh, there is slightly higher inventory there are certain nodes where there is lower inventory so when we try to uh, create a portfolio uh, of of all of this uh, it it then uh, uh, it then causes us to think that you know there will be a little bit of a muted growth as compared to uh, what the real demand in the market is. Okay. Uh, so my final question is, I mean, you did talk about various industries, but can you talk about what is the situation uh, as far as demand from data centers is concerned? Uh, thank you very, very much. Very strong. Uh, can you quantify some uh, that demand, please? So year on year, we have data center business. Our whole business is growing at 12 to 13 percent. Data center business is growing at a CAGR of 25 percent plus. Sure. Thank you. Very. This is very helpful. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet Kulati from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much and congrats on your numbers. Uh, in the beginning, you also gave a guidance of double-digit revenue growth. Uh, is it possible to, to break it up between domestic and exports? And also, how much of this growth could be attributed to volume versus pricing? Uh, it's difficult for us to give you that exact breakup on where we think growth will come from at this stage. Uh, but our ambition has has been that you know, irrespective of which markets go up or down, as a company we we demonstrate that uh, double digit plus uh, growth. Uh, so that is uh, that has been uh, our uh, uh, our endeavor at least for the last uh, few years, and uh, so far we have been uh, uh, successful at that. So specifically for FY24, when you guided, possible to break between volume and pricing. It's always a combination, so it's very difficult to give you an exact uh, uh, answer on that. Certainly volume, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the power gen and some of these markets grow at 7 to 8%. So 
uh, you know, you have to do the math. So if, if the market grows at 7 to 8 percent, we get some market share, and then the rest is all uh, all pricing. Understood. Uh, secondly, if you can give more color around what's driving the distribution uh, part of the business uh, so strongly for you, uh, if you can highlight. Yes, yeah, so, so we have uh, believed that uh, historically we have underserved uh, our own entitlement of the distribution uh, business, uh, but we certainly saw a strong demand come in from uh, parts, uh, quite uh, quite robust. Uh, uh, commitment from customers uh, in terms of service contracts, especially from rail and from big customers in mining, uh, etc. Uh, and uh, even our rebuild business uh, straw saw uh, very good uh, demand uh, pick up. So the nature of the business uh, uh, for us has changed uh, quite significantly, uh, and uh, we expect to see this kind of trend continue. And is there room for further, you know, uh, gain in in market share in the distribution business, or have you achieved the optimal level yet? No, the answer is yes. There's always room for improvement, doing better, and uh, if the overall company has to grow at uh, towards the GDP, every business needs to uh, continue to grow at you know uh, disproportionate level to uh, to the market. Understood. And lastly, on the exports, there was a you know divergent trajectory for LHP and HSP. If you can you know guide to what drove the you know uh, the, the difference and uh, yes, so uh, it's very clear that HSP uh, has always been in a backlog situation. So when you are in a backlog situation, even if the inventory corrections happen and uh, demand uh, starts reducing, you are first fulfilling whatever was already in the pipeline. So the drop is not significant in HHP till the previous quarter. There has no horsepower. Uh, uh, there has never been any supply constraint in, in those markets. So uh, you know, as the demand corrects, you see a direct correlation of that cut. So that's why uh, LHP and HHP are a little bit uh, divergent. And also, a big chunk of uh, HHP goes directly into uh, into product into uh, some of our internal applications so those uh, that demand remains a little more steady than the end user market segments which react more rapidly so when it goes up it goes up faster when it goes down also it goes down faster and this is a typical trend you see different in lsp versus HSP. right and would the similar trend have uh, you know, uh, prevailed in LHP segment as well, right? You alluded to a 60% decline in the domestic market. So, so that's similar in this sense. That is correct. Okay. That's very helpful. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please note we'll be taking only last two questions from the participants. The next question is from the line of Kondinya Nimmagata from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Most of my questions have been answered, sir. But uh, just one question on the CPC for engines. So, uh, when you try to deal, uh, you know, interact with your channels, what is the kind of feedback that you're getting with respect to competition? I mean, with respect to the pricing, uh, price point at which they are launching their products. And do you see any tilt or sense towards any you know, down trading in the industry? Can you provide some calls on that, please? Not seeing the downtrend in the industry. So, start with that first. Uh, product is very, very, very well received in the market. Uh, channel is quite excited about the product. As a matter of fact, Channel is pushing us to give them even more product. Uh, in some nodes, we are lagging in terms of supply because we didn't think the demand would be pulled through uh, as fast as we, uh, we, we would have liked. Uh, as far as uh, pricing is concerned, uh, the, the pricing is being absorbed. We are not seeing any resistance to uh, the pricing uh, from the market uh, at this stage. Uh, and as far as uh, competition is concerned, competition has also announced the product and uh, announced sale of product. And we don't have enough data as of now to uh, to be able to say how how well they are uh, they are doing. But I can tell you about us, uh, we are doing uh, well with the product. Understood, sir. And uh, yes, please go ahead. I think the second thing. Thank you.
The next question is on the line of Amit Anwani from Prabhudas Leeladhar, which will be the last question for today. Please go ahead. Hi, so thanks for taking my question. <clears throat> my question is with respect to, you know, there were some developments on the uh, hydrogen-based ice engine and a uh, couple of months back, I think Cummins uh, in a, in JV with uh, Tata announced some uh, uh, new factory setup. Uh, and also on the electrolyzer, there has been talk uh, of, uh, you know, Cummins INC looking for India market. So just wanted to understand on all these uh, new product initiatives, including uh, battery-based powertrains and uh, uh, SOFCs and uh, hydrogen-based ICE engine, uh, how the Indian entity uh, will be in shape to gain business uh, in coming years? Right. So uh, let me first talk about hydrogen internal combustion engines. Uh, so hydrogen internal combustion engines are where we take and uh, create a new engine which can burn uh, uh, grey hydrogen as well as uh, green hydrogen. And uh, for those kinds of models uh, to be successful you need uh, scale. And uh, so uh, the first applications that have been successful anywhere around the world have been in the automobile space. And so uh, the joint venture with uh, with uh, Tata, Tata Cummins joint venture is getting into uh, that space and they are going to uh, uh, create uh, hydrogen internal combustion engines and then they are going to uh, use it in uh, automotive kind of applications. The target uh, that's going to be set up in the state of Jharkhand and, uh, uh, and uh, they are going to start supplying into those uh, markets. From uh, listed entity perspective, uh, the listed entity will have access to uh, to those technologies which are produced in scale, and we will be able to applicate them into multiple of our applications, including construction, including uh, power generation, etc. And as the market develops, we will use those products uh, uh, and uh, applicate them into those markets, so we will have access to all of that technology. Uh, as far as batteries, etc., is concerned. Uh, the the listed entity is working on uh, tendering for bids, etc. And uh, those the there are batteries which are being developed uh, with uh, with a partner like Tata, but that is for mobility. So mobility battery applications don't really work very well for the industrial scale grid kind of storage. And there the listed entity is working and trying to find some partners from where we can get some of that technology and then uh, uh, you know deploy it into the field. So that is still uh, an exploratory stage. We are filling out some tenders. We are working on that. On the other parts of applications of hydrogen, including uh, including in the rail, marine, and other applications, Cummins uh, uh, India continues to uh, bid out tenders for that and that technology. Uh, uh, will be made available for deployment in into those applications. As far as electrolyzers and the production of hydrogen is concerned, Cummins has formed a new division called Accelera, and that division is looking at the best entry into the India market strategy on how, what is the best way, who are the uh, who are the best partners to be able to produce hydrogen uh, with because these are incredibly high capex kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, equipment which also has very 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 long gestation period for uh, recovery uh, as the market matures so that strategy is not been finalized it is still being worked out and uh, uh, as we make progress certainly we will keep uh, everyone posted sure. so my next question on the data centers you did highlight it that uh being a very strong growth of, uh, I think, 25% upward. So I wanted to understand the <coughs> how was the absolute contribution, the percentage contribution for H1 uh, within PowerGen for, from data centers. And seeing the trend in data centers that there still will be much, you know, uh, much more uh, higher traction uh, in data centers in coming quarters. Are we seeing much higher growth than this or the similar trend will continue? Uh, I can't give the exact uh, contribution of data centers into our revenue, but I can certainly tell you that it is one of our top 10 market segments. 
Uh, the second thing I can tell you is that this trend for data centers is likely to continue at least for the next three to four years. Right. So thanks for taking my question. All the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the end of our question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference again over to Mr. Ashwat Ram for his closing comments. Over to you, Mr. Ram. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your active participation and engagement today. You always uh, ask the most interesting and tough questions. Uh, Commons India believes that the domestic market will continue to have strong growth while export markets uh, are experiencing a bit of softening of demand in the near term. Geopolitical events, continued conflicts between a few countries and their impact continues to present some uncertainty for global trade, therefore we remain cautiously optimistic about the short term. And But from the medium and long term, we are absolutely bullish and optimistic. I would like to assure you that the company continues to leverage its strong balance sheet, world-class infrastructure, on-the-ground manufacturing, engineering, and best-in-class uh, talent and teams. We are confident of sustaining our growth trajectory. Uh, before I close out, I want to wish uh, you, your family, a very happy, prosperous, and safe uh, Diwali. And on this happy note, I close this call. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Cummins India Limited and the leadership team, we would like to thank you for joining us today and making it an engaging session. We are ending the conference now, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.